Oftentimes, the best way to prepare students for the real world is to take them out into the real world. So that's exactly what Hillcrest Work Study does. We like to start off with um, the kids who are being introduced for the first time into work study. They start off doing things on campus, and then as they work themselves up, they can start off in Tools for Teaching, MTI, good places where it's the school district still, so they're still within the umbrella of the school system. And then from there, once they get better at that, we take them into Publix and more places in the community that they can work. Once a week, we, um, we take about three students over to MTI. We start in the gym and we get their big dumpsters and we go and we get all of their recycling throughout the campus. We also go into the district offices and we get all their recycling, which it's kind of a cool opportunity because you get to meet people in the district. They get to see our students and what we do with them. And it's, it's kind of a win-win for everyone. We take them out, we, we undo all their recycling, and then the bus comes and picks us up. We started the program last year with the Hillcrest students coming over to help in Tools for Teaching. They bring two, to three, to four students um, each week, depending on um, the students that are involved in the program at the time. They come on Tuesdays for an hour and work with us here in the store, helping to restock the store and doing odd jobs that we have available here in the store for them to work on. And uh, there have been a big, big help to Tools for Teaching. You can work on this, Albert opening these packages and stacking them right in the red bins down there. Once we point them in a direction, they, they're pretty self-sufficient. They do, they do bring a staff member with them uh, who works with them, and um, she is wonderful in, in helping the, the students to realize what they're to be doing and uh, to help out. Uh, but they're very self-sufficient. They're, they're great students and great helpers. We do it because we want to afford students the opportunity in a school setting to be able to go out into the community and work and learn job skills, job training, um, and also to be able to kind of rotate around and see what they're good at and different opportunities for them. The students get a lot out of it. Um, it's their job skills improve, um, their communication improves a lot, so being able to meet, it's really cool um, for me to see when a, a kid who doesn't really speak much or it's, who's hard to understand can meet one of the managers at Publix and create a relationship with them. And then the, the managers at Publix get excited to see them every week. So that's one of the things that I think they benefit from the most. Um, other things that they benefit from are just job skills, being well-rounded and being able to go out into the community. The hope is that they, they can get a job and be employable when they graduate from Hillcrest. Vanguard chemistry teacher Ewan Hunter spent this year taking his IB students out of the classroom and into the woods as part of a months-long real-world science lesson. The part of a, a project which is to um, do an environmental study of uh, Silver Springs looking at soil, air and water measurements and they're looking over the course of uh, three months so that they can look at um, a couple of different variables. One of them would be how various concentrations of ions change over time or how they change from distance from the spring head. And <clears throat> what they're doing is there are 37 students involved in this project and they each have a, a set responsibility for one of the particular um, ions that they're looking for, so for example nitrate or ammonium or potassium etc. And what we will do is at the end of the report we'll pull together all this data and present it as almost like a holistic study of uh, Silver Springs. The hope is that we can continue to run this program over uh, the years to come and that means that subsequent students can then try and hopefully look at longitudinal data and hopefully we see an improvement in spring quality as a result. For the students, a few hours in the woods is a much better lesson than several days in a classroom. And no matter how many lectures we get and no matter how, even if we do experiments here in the class, we, it is a controlled environment. So it's, it's probably better for teaching, but I don't know if better for learning necessarily, uh, which is why there's so much value in going out and experiencing things in the real world because there are problems that we're, we're more required to use creative thinking to solve problems than we are in the classroom because uh, for the groups, for example, there's one Mr. Hunter and we split into um, the group on the boat, the tram, and the hike. And Mr. Hunter goes with the hike, but everyone experiences all three of these groups. So uh, creative, creative thinking is used a lot because Mr. Hunter isn't necessarily there to answer the question. Just look out for the poison ivy. 
I'm really grateful and I really appreciate that opportunity because it's one thing to read about a process and know it in a textbook, but then when you go out into Silver Springs, it's like a completely different thing, being able to go and use what you've learned in class out in the field. And it gives you the chance to figure out, okay, you're going to make mistakes and then how can we correct these mistakes? So I think the process overall is just really enlightening because you learn new things that you wouldn't have gotten in a textbook if you had just sat down and read about doing uh, uh, for example, a titration or measuring ammonium in soil. So I think that's really cool. This is almost completely student-led. Um, you know, I set up the parameters, but other than that, the, the students have to problem solve. You know, I'm not an expert in soil or water analysis. You know, my background is as, as a chemist, but not particularly um, in this situation. And therefore, the students are faced with real-life situations, um, chemical problems that you know there isn't an answer at the back of the textbook for, and therefore they're having to problem solve and then learn and learn by that. So, to, to, to be honest, in my uh, chemistry teaching career, um, this is uh, the best example I've done uh, where students have done real chemistry in a real situation in a world class resort um, and doing real chemistry, which will hopefully stand them instead for going to college, not just for chemistry, but just the, the broader skills of teamwork and leadership and problem solving and resilience that this kind of project develops. When you go out there and you're testing uh, the soil or the water, you have to try and manage your time, and so that's one aspect in learning how to do that. And then when you come back to class, it's like, okay, how do we make this efficient? How do we dry the soil? How do we make sure we can measure the levels without interfering um, with the accuracy of the data? So it really is multiple lessons wrapped up in one. Hunter has been a prolific grant writer, greatly supplementing his school-provided budget. That has allowed him to buy supplies for this project, which can also be used for other lessons, extending the benefit. We've uh, managed to get around $40,000 over the last year or so uh, in grants, and that's allowed us to buy a lot of data logging equipment and equipment to use back in the school. Because when the students are out here, they make some measurements in situ, for example, temperature and pH, uh, but other ones need to be analyzed back in the classroom. And to do that, we needed a lot more chemicals and equipment. Uh, so that's what they do back in school. The other advantage is that, that those chemicals and equipment can be used just for teaching regular um, chemistry classes too. And so um, we get a, a multitude of benefits from having done this project. We didn't have a lot of the instruments that we do have now, but because of the grants he's gotten, it's allowed us to do this project, first of all, and then even outside of this project, like for one of my experiments, for my individual assessment, I was able to do it because of the grant money he got to get one of the materials I needed to do it. So it's very important that he's done this for us, and we've all really felt um, the importance of doing that for us. It's like a win-win-win situation, because as the students, we learn a lot better, I think. Um, as a teacher, obviously, Mr. Hunter gets increased budget for the chemistry, and quite frankly, I, I can tell I was on the hike with him last time, he enjoys it. And then um, it's a win for the organizations that are giving us the money because they get to see the students that are like learning so much more effectively and trying new things and in a more real-world environment. I would like to try and get a lot of equipment it's to be stationed at um, the Silver River Museum so that any school could come out here and do something similar. And that means that they could make the measurements in situ and then they could bring the soil or water samples back to the Silver River Museum and just test them there. So you could get like a whole day project out of it. Ultimately, Hunter would like to see the program expand so that all schools can use nature's classroom. Well, I'd like the other two schools would have the opportunity to do it because when we've got such a great resource that um, it'd be a shame not for other schools to be able to take advantage of it.